pretty bitch music trending off the hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is dom dolly and we're going to be doing something a little different today i've been getting a lot of questions about my mommy makeover journey a recovery process my surgeon uh surgeon fees and all that other good stuff so i will be going over all of that today with you guys but before we get into all of that i want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel so far and if you haven't done so already please do not forget to subscribe comment and like please do not hesitate to message me or email me or anything like that i will leave all my contact information down below but today's q a hopefully i'll be able to answer all of them today all right so we're gonna jump right into this the first question that i've been getting very frequently is what were my before stats and what are my stats now going into surgery i was 196.5 Five. right now I am still 196.5 um, though my weight has not changed my height I'm 6'2 I'm a tall doll and my BMI was 25.1 my breast measurements I remember I was a 38 double D as you guys know my boobs have not dropped or fluffed or anything like that they're still pretty high so I don't know those measurements right now my hip measurements were 43 inches and they're still the same I think it's like 43 and a half right now and with the fat that was transferred into my hips it's still chilling right there it hasn't fluffed either it's pretty hard still like it's, it hasn't migrated anywhere else thank goodness but it hasn't taken on its form of my hips yet i can definitely feel the difference when i put on pants and shorts and all that other good stuff it's my pants from pre-surgery they're tight so i know that my fat is there it just needs to fluff and all that other good stuff next questions i usually get asked did i have any more consultations before I went to Dr. K. Now, I have a list of consultations that I went through before I went to Dr. K and I was actually booked with somebody before Dr. K, literally like two weeks before I even had my consultation with Dr. K. I spoke briefly about the Miami plastic surgery community and how um, most clinics down in Miami, they run things a little bit differently. I know some places that you can actually have a walk-in consultation and actually sit down with the surgeon and all, but the clinics that I, obviously I'm in Jersey, so obviously I can't go to Miami and visit all of the freaking plastic surgery clinics down there. But I expected everything to go a little bit differently. I expected to have FaceTime calls and all with the surgeons that I was interested in and it just did not go that way. Anything that I needed to ask a surgeon, it was through an email and I was in contact with a surgery coordinator instead of the surgeon. I don't even think the surgeon looked at my picture to see exactly if I was qualified for anything like that. I originally wasn't even going to get a mommy makeover. All my consultations before Dr. Cordestani was just for breast lift with implants and maybe possibly lipo 360. I never thought I was going to get a full mommy makeover. Like I thought I would be able to work it off and that would be that. But since I had so many consultations, a few reputable places that I was able to talk to, they told me that I needed a tummy tuck and all. Let's go down this list. My first consultation was with Dr. Zuri in Miami. That didn't go as planned. I, like I said, surgical coordinators, it's just not for me. I didn't know that he had a private practice at the time and he is a great surgeon don't get me wrong but the clinic that he works out of as well it's just not for me Miami has chop shops and I'm not down for that I'm a little too spoiled PGI cosmetics they have a botched Facebook group and after I seen the Facebook group I wasn't beat to go there then I 
seen 305 there's so many celebrities that go through 305 some Rella went through 305 and all I wasn't going to Dr. William definitely didn't want to go down that route I watched his YouTube channel I watched his Instagram page I just feel like his demeanor just wasn't for me I actually booked with Dr. Salas at 305 before I even knew about Dr. K I booked with him for a breast lift and implants and that was that. I was going to add on Lipo 360 and I didn't even get that far. Like I said, screw it. After I did more research about Miami clinics and how they treat people, I wasn't beat to go there. I needed to be the only patient that day and I was hearing that they were doing eight patients a day. I just, <laughs> it just didn't seem safe to me. So I decided I was gonna keep my date in Miami until I found somebody else. I did more consultations. I actually, I did paperwork with dolls, plastic surgery, don't freaking go there. Listen, I went to any popular Miami surgeon you can think of. I'm not about to sit here and go down the list. I looked at a few places in Jersey, which were the only two surgeons that I know of that are even worth the amount of money that Jersey surgeons try to charge people, which is Dr. Burnett, and Dr. Alkin and who child their their price range <laughs> I don't care what tax bracket I am in I am not paying that amount I refuse to like I looked at my quotes and I was like yeah I'm good I also did a few consultations for DR the problem with DR for me was other than people trying to scare you half to death about people dying left and right in DR. I went to Disla. I did a consultation with her. She was another surgeon that told me that I needed a tummy tuck. And I also did a consultation with Fatima Altman. My problem with DR was I was going to spend way too much time there. They were telling me that I had to stay for 15 to 20 days. I have a two year old. There's no way in hell that I'm gonna bring my two year old to DR or leave my two year old in the United States. After the consultations that I had with the surgeons in DR, I found a few local, what I mean by local is a two hour or an hour drive from me in Delaware. But one of those places were Julebe, I believe. That's what it's called. I'll leave the right spelling. The surgeon there, she did breast lifts, but she said that she didn't do implants, which I was like, what? Okay, so what do you do? So she said that she did fat transfers to breasts, which was great until I figured out that uh, fat transfers to breasts don't really last too long. The fat that is transferred to your breasts, uh, only about 60% of that fat survives or less. And that was pretty much my problem with that surgeon is if I'm going to get a fat transfer to my breast, I would want the same volume to last. I don't want any fat to die. And so I'm not going to get all excited. And then months down the road, my boobs are not obviously deflated, but it loses its volume. No, I'm not beat to do all that. And then after that consultation with that surgeon, I filled out my form for Dr. K's office online. It took about two weeks for me to get a call from their office and I was able to book my consultation. I think the consultation was a month and a half later if I'm not mistaken. So I got in pretty fast. I know people right now, they have their consultation in like 2022. 20, right now. That brings me on to my next question. Why did I choose Dr. K? I answered this briefly before in my previous video. Dr. K not only is his staff and himself just so comforting and so caring and he only does one to two patients a day which is also great. Like I said, I'm way too spoiled for that Miami life. I need to be able to know that you are not tired from doing another seven dolls before me. I wanna make sure that you are well rested and I won't get botched. So 
Dr. K was great with all of that. He was accessible to me even before I had my consultation with him. And he's two hours away. I didn't have to spend seven days like I would in Miami. I wouldn't have to spend 15 to 20 days like I would in DR. Dr. K said maybe a day or two at a hotel with my husband to make sure that he's able to drive to me if I need any assistance with anything and then I can drive home and recover at home. I love Dr. K for that. And also his prices were amazing, which brings me on to my next question that I always get. What was my quote for my mommy makeover? Here's the thing with Dr. K. These are not Miami prices. There is no set price on exactly one procedure. What he does is he makes sure that each patient who gets enough time in the OR. My surgery was supposed to be four and a half hours and I was getting breast lift with implants, lipo to my flanks and fat transfer to my hips with muscle repair and a mini tummy tuck. That was supposed to take four and a half hours. The cost of that was $9,760. As you guys know from my previous video, my surgery did not take four and a half hours. It ended up being six hours and because of my stubborn belly button, I will probably get a bill and I will, not even probably, I will be getting a bill in the mail for the time I went over in the OR. So I'll definitely update you on the cost of that. The price of the implant is obviously a set price. The procedure is a set price, but the time in the OR is not a set price. So my price and whatever quote that you would get would be completely different in those ways. The next question is, does he take care credit? Dr. K's office does not take care credit that I know of. What he does is in-house financing, which is even better in my opinion. In-house financing for Dr. K's office, you get a $250 fee that does not go towards your quote. For the surgeon's fee, that payment plan gets set up for two months before your surgery. You start paying per month for 12 months. For the OR and anesthesia fee, you would have to pay that two weeks before surgery in full, which is awesome because they don't even run your credit for that. You can also pay in full, obviously, and then two weeks you can pay your um, OR and anesthesia fee. And then I think they have another option. You pay 50% or some percentage. And then obviously, again, with the OR and the anesthesia, you pay that two weeks before your surgery date. But he does not take care credit. What did I get done? Again, what I got done is a mommy makeover, which obviously is different for every patient. My mommy makeover consisted of breast lift with implants, lipo to my flanks, a tummy tuck, with muscle repair I actually got an extended tummy tuck which the scar is from hip to hip with muscle repair that fat that he took out I told him to put it back so he put that back into my hip what are the pros and cons for my experience with Dr. K and the hospital staff at ANOVA I can tell you up front and honestly that I literally have no cons about Dr. K or the hospital staff. Everybody is amazing and I will continue to say that. My pros go on for days and his hospital staff are amazing. He is so attentive and so caring and so is his staff. Everybody is just so loving and they make you feel 100% safe. I literally didn't feel any type of nerve even when I got to the hospital. They make sure their patients are very comfortable. Their hospital staff at ANOVA is great. Did I stay in a recovery house or a hotel? I stayed at a hotel with my husband for two nights, the night before surgery and then day and night of surgery. We did late checkout the day after surgery. Next question that I got was, where are the placements of my implants? Is it above the muscle or underneath? My implants are underneath the muscle. My next question, was I able to eat after surgery? And if I was, what did I eat? The video I did from zero to day three, I told you guys I was starving, literally. But when I woke up, that's the first thing I thought of was food. I was so hungry, it's not even funny. And I did eat after I got out of the recovery room. I actually asked my husband to go get some Chick-fil-A and that was the worst decision of my life. The only reason I say that is because my throat was so sore from being intubated that I I just couldn't even swallow without wanting to shed a few tears. It just hurt so bad. I had my husband get 
a three piece tender maybe four piece I can't even remember chicken tender and a small fry and when I tell you I didn't even eat half of that like I couldn't even eat it it was torture like I literally was torturing myself when I was finished with that I asked my husband if we can go to Starbucks and I just got a chai tea so I can have something to soothe my sore throat it was just so bad don't be like me guys don't get chick-fil-a after <laughs> you get out of surgery my fat ass suffered and I don't want you guys suffering either how bad was the pain apparently I did complain when I woke up from anesthesia uh, that's what the nurses told my husband and that's what my husband told my friends but I honestly don't remember that I was just so out of it I could have been in pain who knows after anesthesia wore off I really didn't feel too much pain the only pain I really did feel is the first time I ever coughed and the literally the last time I haven't coughed since I felt like my body exploded that's how bad that pain was even now I can't laugh or sneeze or anything like that because that's the only time I really feel pain but oh my god guys literally that pain is like indescribable like I literally felt like whole body just exploded it was just so bad but other than that I really didn't feel any pain it was more of discomfort and just trying to maneuver and figure out how to get in and out of my bed or in and out of the car without pulling at my drains that I had after I got my drains out I literally felt this sense of relief because I feel like the only pain was the muscle apparel with me coughing or sneezing or anything and the drains I literally dreaded because I just felt like everything was just getting tugged and pulled and all the other stuff so once it came out like I literally haven't felt any pain ever since next question that I have is how do I sleep since I got my surgery and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you my entire setup don't mind my outfit <laughs> um I had pants on I'm just gonna show you without the pants because I don't sleep with all these clothes on but the two wedge pillows that you guys see me have in the previous video of all my supplies. Then I have my pregnancy pillow. This is what I do. I put everything. I stack as many pillows as I can. Here. Here. And another pillow. Here. This one I put up against like this. This pillow, I have another couple pillows that I stack like so, right? This is how I get into a freaking bed. So I get into bed and I shimmy myself all the way down, right? And then, listen, I'm 6'2", so I don't know if you guys that are shorter are going to be able to do this. But then, I swing my legs like so. And this is how I sleep every day. And it's comfortable. I just swing my blanket over like such. But it's comfortable. And I get out of bed like this too. <laughs> Or like slide down I have a platform bed so it's not that hard for me to get in and get out because I have there's levels to this shit I promise you guys I'm not trying to hold you I'm not trying to hold you I promise I always get the question of what exactly am I going to wear when I pop out what I am wearing when I pop out is on its way from Fashion Nova I will definitely show you guys what I am going to wear when I am completely faha free foam free lipo board app board whatever type of board free I will definitely show you guys when it comes in the mail I'm definitely going to do a try on haul with all the stuff that I got that is faha friendly and all so stay tuned for that video in the next couple of days give me at least seven days and I guarantee you we're gonna do a whole trial haul together that is all the questions that I have for you guys if you have any more questions please do not hesitate to DM me or contact me in any way don't forget to like comment and subscribe hit the bell for the notification anytime that I post a new video you'll be the first one to know I appreciate all you guys I love you guys and I will see you guys next time Bye. Pretty face, no waste, first place. I'd be a billionaire if I saw my sex tape.